in our world, the way our brains work, the way the media is working currently, we are at a confluence of two powerful things. The first thing is, is that the human brain likes stories and influencers. Even 10 or 15 years ago, if you wanted to get your story out to the world, you had to go talk to some aged white dude in a suit and get permission. Today, all you need do is turn on your device and say, hello world and you can talk to everybody. The ability to get out onto a stage or get in front of a camera and speak your mind and share your creativity and share your ideas can have a wholesale impact on your business. It can change everything. If you have a social cause where you wanna have an impact on the world, your ability to tell a story, your ability to associate people can change everything. Are you ready? It's a real relief to be introduced in English. <laughs> no, it's crazy when you get out there in the world, you get introduced in other languages and you don't know what they're saying. So I went to, I went to Copenhagen a bunch of years ago and I was doing an event there and the, the host, who's a buddy of mine, and uh, he introduced the whole thing in Danish. And like, if you think Estonian is complicated, then go to Danish. I mean, these are the two most complicated languages I could possibly imagine. And so I can't pick out, I can't even tell the difference between one word and the next. It's like, you know, with German, French, I can hear the words. I might not understand them, but with these, I don't think they're even speaking. I think they've made it up. It's like some secret forest elf language. It's, you know, but, but so now I, I'm, I'm on stage or I'm, I'm off stage. I'm getting ready to come up and he starts introducing me in Danish. And he's talking and talking and talking. It turns out what he's saying to them is, you guys, um, you know, this is not a very big audience for Eric, so I don't know how excited he is about this. <laughs> like, no kidding, this is what he's saying. He's like, you know, normally he's got bigger audiences, and this is about 200 people or so, it's not a small audience, and he's like, and, uh, you know, and, and he's also really used to crowds being really excited about being here, so what we're going to do is not be excited. He says, I don't want you to be the least. So when I, when I introduce him and when I bring him up, you're going to, and I'm going to say, Eric Edmonds to the stage, you're going to go... And you're just gonna do that, and then he's gonna walk up and it's gonna totally wreck his state. It's, it's gonna totally wreck his state because he's gonna be like, what's going on? And then he's gonna start, and then I'm gonna cue you all, and then you're all gonna jump up and give him a thunderous standing ovation opening. So he says all this, I have no idea. For all I told him, he said he had cornflakes for breakfast. I don't know what he said to them. And I walk up onto the stage, and it's like, and I'm like, Wow, this is like Finland. <laughs> I, 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 what, what is going on here? But it did not wreck my state because little things like that just, you know, it's not going to. So I just, so I just started into my talk and then about like 45 seconds in, he cued them and they jumped up and scared the shit out of me. <laughs> anyway, so Gurren, thank you for not doing that to me. All right, now. I am going to attempt to pack an inordinate amount of stuff in for you guys today, a huge amount of stuff. Who wants a huge amount? Okay. And before I do that, I want to get clear about why we're doing this. Why we're doing this. And, and I want to put it to you in the simplest terms that I can. In our world, the way our brains work, the way the media is working currently, we are at a confluence of two powerful things. The first thing is, is that the human brain likes stories and influencers. I don't mean Instagram influencers, I mean real influencers. Like, the, the human brain really likes stories to come in. We know that, but now technology has converged and made it possible for you to get your story out to the world. I want you to remember, I want you to remember that even 10 or 15 years ago, if you wanted to get your story out to the world, you had to go talk to some aged white dude in a suit and get permission. Do you understand what I'm saying? You, if you used to want to get on radio or get on TV, you had to go talk to some dude and get permission if he thought you were worthy. Today, all you need do is turn on your device and say, hello world, and you can talk to everybody. And, and, and that means that if you do it really effectively, if you tell stories really effectively, if you give a lot of value, if you are engaging, if people are sitting on the edge of their chair and they want to pay attention, if you can do that, you can grow your own audience. You no longer need to have a gatekeeper. That's exciting. 
That's really, really exciting. And, and let's talk about what that can do. That can have a massive impact for you in business. For those of you who are in business, if you're entrepreneurs, self-employed, the ability to get out onto a stage or get in front of a camera and speak your mind and share your creativity and share your ideas can have a wholesale impact on your business. It can change everything. If you have a social cause, if you have a social cause where you want to have an impact on the world, your ability to tell a story, your ability to associate people can change everything. You know, there's a lot of debate at the moment about climate change and all that kind of stuff, right? And I'm going to just tell you something. I'm not a big fan of the argument. I'm not a big fan of us debating climate change. And, and, and I think it's crazy for us to be, debate it because there are much simpler things for us to not debate. How about this? Is there too much pollution? Does it matter if you're a Republican or a Democrat or a liberal or a conservative? Is there too much pollution? Is there too much air pollution? Is there too much plastic in the ocean? Yeah. Is the world warming? We think so. Are people causing it? We think so. Like, those things are debatable, but the things I'm mentioning are not. And I want to give you an example of how powerful this is. I saw a documentary of the Midway Islands. The Midway Islands are some of the remote, most remote islands in the world. And there are birds that live on these islands, and there are no ground predators. So the birds lay their nests on the ground. And a filmmaker, documentary filmmaker, wildlife filmmaker and photographer went to these islands. And he walked on and these just thousands of birds and it's so loud. All the birds making all this noise and they're flying everywhere. And he's taken the most phenomenal pictures, gorgeous video. And then he comes upon a nest on the ground. And in the nest, there's a skeleton, a bird that's died. They don't have a lot of predators, so many of the birds probably do die of relatively natural causes, but in its nest, it's just there in the nest. But then as he zooms in and looks in at the skeleton, you see that it's colorful. Not the skeleton itself, you understand, that in amongst the bones of the skeleton, which is lying there perfectly preserved, there are bits of plastic from the bird's beak to its anus and all the way through it. This is in the most remote place on earth. There are bits of plastic. This bird was killed by plastic scrubbies and bits of plastic that we consume. Do you think you should use less plastic? Do you feel slightly more compelled about that right now than maybe five minutes ago? That's why stories are important. They evoke emotion and they take you. How many of you guys kind of felt like you're on Midway Island for just a moment? You're looking at the nest, right? Stories are so very important. So if you have a social cause, your ability to create influence is driven by this. And by the way, I'm not the first person to spot this. You know, John F. Kennedy. John F. Kennedy had a speech impediment. He was terrible at public speaking. Nobody thought he was going to be able to get through that. He overcame his fear of public speaking and then gave one of the most powerful speeches in the history of the world. Winston Churchill also had a speech impediment and had difficulties with public speaking and arguably used public speaking to win World War II. Steve Jobs launched one of the most amazing, impactful companies in the world, largely with his ability to communicate with public speaking. Is it true? Yes. So this is a very, very powerful thing. By the way, can it be used for evil? Yes. Absolutely. It's just, frankly, it's like the force. <laughs> it's like the force. There's the light side and the dark side. So I, wanna, I want you to know that what I'm sharing with you today is super powerful stuff. And then I'm just going to hope, I'm going to ask that you use it for the greatest benefit and the greatest good. I say that, thank you, I paid her. <laughs> she was supposed to do it louder and longer so it spread, but we'll talk later. I'm, uh, <laughs> so, the reason I mention about the light and the good, because here's another area that public speaking could be really powerful, and that is politics. But here's the trouble. The people who should be politicians are not. They're not. And the people who should not be politicians are. I mean, I'm not talking about Boris John. Did I say that out loud? <laughs> I, I'm just saying there's some people, Justin Trudeau, I'm just saying that there's some people that are lifelong, li lifelong politicians that, that, have, that are not in touch with the world at all. And, and they shouldn't be politicians. And this, the joke of it is, you know who should be the politicians? You know where they are? They're in this room. They're in rooms like this.
And so what I want you to know is that you have the capacity to have a huge impact on your life, on your community, on your business, on your country, on the world, if you unlock this skill. And as I mentioned yesterday, this skill is already inside you. You were born with it. You were an effective communicator from the beginning. You were. You were very good at it. And then somebody came along and said, indoor voice. Think before you speak. Are you, are you, did you think about that? Why did you say that? Be a little quieter. Talk a little this, a little of that. And slowly you started building a human skin around you. And that's the human skin that you go out and show to the world. And by the way, what's crazy is, have you ever noticed, like, I'm not a big fan of alcohol, frankly. I, I haven't had alcohol in 30 years. I don't judge people who want to have it. I mean, I, in fact, I have some friends that I prefer after they've had one glass of wine. <laughs> Once they've had three, I have to leave. You know, there's a sweet spot, right? There's a sweet spot. But isn't it true that you take a group of adults and give them a little bit of alcohol and suddenly they become better public speakers? Is it true? It's because it was already inside them and alcohol just depresses their inhibitions. In other words, it's your inhibitions that hold you back from being a great communicator. What's crazy is you go to a party and somebody tells stories and jokes and they're incredible and they're fun and you go, oh, they're the life of the party. Well, why don't you be like, I don't know, I couldn't do that. Oh, really? Why not? Oh, I'm afraid of judgment. That's what it really comes down to. And I have some good news for you about judgment. You walk into a room and you're going, I wonder what they think of me. I wonder what they think of me. I'll tell you what they're thinking. Here's what they're thinking. You're over here going, I wonder what they think of me. I wonder what they think of me. They're over here going, I wonder what they think of me. I wonder what they think of me. I wonder what they think of me. Everybody's so busy worrying about what everybody else is thinking about them. They don't have time to think about you. So you're good. You're fine. So. I have a very important question. I need mic runners for this. Mic runners, please. I, I have a very important question, and, it, and I want to get answers from a few people, and here it is. And mic runners, when you see, I can't see a thing with the lights, so when you see hands up, just hand it over, and here's what you're going to do. I want to know what you might be, what you might be one talk away from. What might you be one talk away from? Raise your hand. Go ahead. Just tell us your name, where you're from, and what you might be one talk away from. My name's Kelly Eckwurzel. I'm from Texas in the United States. And I am one talk away from helping a lot of women who have had breast cancer and are not just survivors, but are thrivers. Give her a hand. Before we go to the next one, before we go to the next one that's back here, um, this is why I do this. That, that exact thing. You know what we did yesterday? We brought somebody, we're not gonna point her out and mention to everybody where she's roughly sitting, but I brought somebody up here on stage. Was that amazing? Yes. The very first time I did that was in Cape Town. And it was an accident. I didn't mean to do it. I was just up on stage and I was talking about stage fright and then this one woman raised her hand and it, I realized I looked over, it wasn't her hand she was raising, it was her friend's hand. And then I looked at her friend and I saw that her friend was in such a significant amount of pain. She was so in pain. And I couldn't, I couldn't, I just couldn't. And so I, I don't know what I was thinking. I didn't know how I was gonna do it, but I just invited her up. And I brought her up on the stage and I talked to her about her fear. And every time she started to look at the audience, she started crying. She just couldn't do it. Handed her microphone, she just started crying. And I suddenly thought, you idiot, what have you done to yourself? What are you going to do with this? Like, what am I going to do with this? And I started talking with her, and I did pretty much what I did yesterday. I got her breathing. I got her to focus on her peripheral vision. And I got her thinking about other things. And I got her talking backwards. And then I moved to the side. And so she was kind of forced to turn her head to talk to me. And then I stepped down off the stage and she was kind of forced to turn around. And then I sat down in one of the chairs and pretty soon she's talking to the whole room about the best vacation she's ever been on. Then I asked her, what would you speak about if you suddenly right now decided that you could, that you could be comfortable? What would you speak about? And she said, I want to speak about bulimia and anorexia. She said, I, I've suffered with it for most of my life and I'm finally on the other side of it. But every time I try to speak to kids about it, I just start crying. And I go, well, what would you tell us about it? And she started talking about bulimia and anorexia and what led to it. And she talked about how her parents, in all of their good intentions to help her, actually hurt. And she shared all of these things that were really, really valuable. And all of a sudden, we're like, well, why are you not crying right now? And she goes, I don't know. 
And that was the moment that I really decided to go out into the world and share this with people because I was like, there are so many. And I'll tell you something, you guys, like, you guys, I know, I know, I had, you guys were so sweet to me last night. Lots of people, and I appreciate every single comment. Thank you guys so very much. I just kept having this one thing, you're special. No, I'm bloody not. Not any more than you are. I'm not. I, I've, I've had my life experience. You've had your life experience. I'm here to tell you right now, every one of you, that you have moments in your life, that you have life experience, that you have observations, you have experiences that are infinitely valuable to people, to other people. But you've forgotten that because you lived through them. Because you possess those experiences, you take them for granted. But I'm telling you right now, some of you have survived abuse, some of you have gone through trauma, some of you have built a business, some of you have written a book, some of you have been bullied, some of you were the bully. Some of you have had a life experience, every one of you. I'm telling you right now, every single one of you, with the permission to be yourself and some skills, could be standing up here on stage and holding everybody into their chair, and I'd be very happy to sit in the audience and hear you do that. I am not any more special than any one of you.